Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be honest and let you know straight up front that I did not have time to bake with it being 4th of July. So I used two already um, prepared square cakes that I stacked on top of each other to create this modern, more masculine version of a marbled fondant cake. So what I did was this was my cake before I assembled it, I have those um, straws in the top to support the top tier because since it's such a tall cake, it's going to need some support in the middle. So you have those straws and then you have a board underneath the top, top cake. I did cut that one in half and I stacked it on top. It looks a little rough now and I know it does. But this is after I did my first coat of ganache to try to fill in the gap that I had in between the two of them. And this is my final coat of ganache. So now it is ready to be decorated. This cake had about seven layers of six inch square cake is what that came to. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and I am getting a piece of fondant prepared to put on the top of this cake. I just used a, um, I just kind of mixed colors I already had, um, like I said, Kind of busy this week, so I only had time to do one video and I had to kind of utilize what I already had on hand, just so I could have something to show you. Um, so I used some blues, this is navy blue, no, it was royal blue with some black added to it, into my fondant, and I just went ahead and cut off the excess. Typically, I would wanna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator and set it up, and it's a little easier to cut off that excess at that point. Or you can turn the cake upside down and cut it off that way like I've shown you in previous videos. But this was a big tall cake so I didn't want to take any chances. So I'm just using my fondant smoother to smooth out those edges. And then I put it in the refrigerator while I worked on the rest of the fondant. Now for this wrap I'm doing a panel method. With a taller cake like this I prefer to do the paneling. I feel like I have a little bit more control. But I wanted to do the blue on the top, about a third, a quarter to a third of it, this blue, just around the top. And then the marble went on the bottom part of the cake. And I just kind of lined that up with my ruler to make sure that I have a straight edge, set it up on the, on the, the um, upper part of my table there while I prepared the rest. A little resting time is okay when it comes to doing paneling because it actually allows it to firm up a little bit so it's not stretching so much when you're moving it onto the cake. Now I just used two different colors of blue. One had more royal, one had more navy in it, and some white and some gold, some already prepared gold fondant. Now I'm just, I'm trying to keep this more of a horizontal linear kind of marbling instead of all mushed together. I didn't mind some of it, the colors blending into each other, but I wanted kind of the idea of the, the, the fondant or the marbling wrapped around the cake. Like I said, a little bit more of a masculine cake on this one. Now just play with your marbling until you get it where you want it. And just keep in mind that the longer you play with it, the more those colors are gonna blend in together. And I didn't wanna do that, so I kinda had to stop myself. I wanna keep going, but I stopped myself. And then I had measured out the height and the circumference around the cake, and I cut it to size. There, I'm cutting to off the excess. The nice part about that, when you cut off a big piece like that, when you roll out a big piece like that, you can kind of have a little bit more uh, choice on what section you want to use. And remember to check that back also, because sometimes the back um, actually looks better than the front, the, the piece you're looking at. And I chose this side. So I just lifted it as gently as I could onto the cake. You could do the transfer where you uh, wrap it around a dowel and then take it up to the cake or put it on a piece of acetate sheet with some some shortening on it and then transfer it up that way. I did that with the top, but for the bottom, I just, since it had, it sat out for a little bit, so it was firm enough that I felt comfortable just lifting it up. Now make sure that the fondant is as tall as you need it to be. You can play with it a little bit to kind of stretch it on up there, especially if you're using a dark chocolate ganache as your crumb coat like I did. Um, it's a little bit more resistant to pushing on it. It's not gonna mush as much as a buttercream would. Mush is technical term, I know. But you know what I'm saying, you're not gonna move the um, ganache around as much as you would the buttercream. Um, so yeah, so I'm just smoothing out that, those two cut edges together. 
and I had used shortening on the cake to get the fondant to stick. You could use a simple syrup if you prefer. You can use just straight water. Um, I just find that shortening works great because if you misplace where you want it to go and you need to move it, you're not as committed. You can, you can remove it and relocate it if you need to. Okay, so what I'm doing here is this is where I have a piece of acetate sheet cut to the length that I need it. I put some shortening on it and stuck it onto the fondant so that it would stick to the acetate when I transfer it up to the cake. Now I just tried to align it as best as I could with that line of that other piece of fondant and then just cut off that excess and try to rub it together. I knew I was going to put that gold piece on there, that gold strip, so I wasn't too worried about that transition in between the two. But then go ahead and just smooth out all of your corners and edges. I didn't really have the time to let things set as much as I'd like to. So you will notice that there are a few bubbles in the fondant um, on the top, just little, tiny little um, air bubbles in it because I didn't have time to let it set up. I like to, I prefer to have my uh, fondant set up in the fridge overnight. Then it solidifies and you don't have to worry about digging it so much and you can kind of work with getting those air bubbles out a little bit easier. But there was a, a high stretch factor in this cake. So I just worked with it. Just make it work. And then I went back in with my gold luster dust mixed with some Everclear to make that gold more of a metallic gold. I like more of the metallic gold versus the yellow gold, but I thought it worked fine with the gold that was fondant that was in the marbling. Um, Cause I did go back and you'll see in a minute here, I went in and I kind of redefined some of those veins with some more of that gold luster dust and ever clear combination to kind of incorporate that throughout and make it cohesive. Now, if you want to, you can use um, lemon extract instead of Everclear. You can use vodka. You could even use um, rejuvenating spirits if they are available to you. I have looked briefly on Amazon and I did not find it. Um, this might be more of a UK thing. I'm not sure. If I am incorrect, please let me know and I would be willing to give that a try as well. Now right here is where I'm redefining those veins a little bit with just a finer brush. There's no real rhyme or reason to how you do this. You just find um, what looks like a line and just go ahead and use your, your paint, whatever color it may be. You could even, if you're doing a silver, you can do that. If you're doing a rose gold, you can do that too. And just, I think it really adds a pop of um, sophistication, really, when you add that metallic to a marbled cake. I really like that combination. Now I'm, I'm just using a little shortening to brush off that extra cornstarch. Now I do have a technique that I want to try that was suggested to me, and I have made it, but I haven't used it. Probably gonna have to remake it again because it's probably old now. Um, of a gloss that you can brush on that would work really well potentially with the acrylic gloss technique, but I just haven't had time to do that yet. And I thought about doing it on this cake, but I ran out of time, like I keep saying. <laughs> so we'll do that on another day, but the shortening adds some, um, some shine to it, but it will matte out overnight. It won't be as shiny the next day. Now I'm just using a heavy gauge gold wire. And this was used, I found this in the jewelry section of one of my craft stores. Now this is not edible, obviously. You could do, make this edible if you want to with some floral wire uh, and paint it gold. But I liked the high shine of this and I wanted to use this, incorporate this. This is really a more con very contemporary design. And I thought this would go better with it. Now what I am doing is I added a little hook shape to the back and I stuck that into the cake. Now. Keep in mind that if this is for an order, you're going to want to, and you do this method, you're gonna wanna cover that end in floral tape to make it food safe. And make sure that you tell your customer that this is not edible, it needs to be removed. Even add it into a contract if need be. Now they can okay it or not okay it, that's up to them. But for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and used it with that disclaimer. Um, and I made some hook shapes out of a little extra wire 
like a hairpin to attach it to the back. Unfortunately, this is one of those cakes, if you do it this way, that is not going to be very pretty from the back. You're going to want to show this one just from the front and the sides. Um, if my fondant had had time to set up overnight, I wouldn't have had to worry about that so much because the heavy gauge wire would have held its shape better and it wouldn't have dinged in the fondant so much. So I wouldn't have had to add that extra support. So there you go, guys. Now I got to think of my how to verbalize this, my masculine-esque <laughs> um, horizontal marbled cake, modern cake. I hope you liked it. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.